altar of disposability. Mm -hmm. um, in the book, you mention a thing called perpetual presentism. Is that correct? Do I have that terminology right? Yeah, I, yeah, I forget exactly, but yeah, presentism and perceptual yeah. presentism. Yeah, yeah, uh, or perceptual presentism. Maybe that's what it is. Describe what that is, because I think mm -hmm. people in talking about a wisdom diet and those who are using their phones all the time, there, there is this idea of being caught up. This is this idea that I can't, that I have to know what's going on in the moment. And, yeah. and then after you talk about that, I do want to go back to what you said earlier about rest and Sabbath, mm -hmm. changing that rhythm. But let's talk about the perpetual presentism. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I think the, our, our primary mode of interacting with the world is through the now, right? What's on our feed right now. And it's, we live in this mode of scrolling through constantly and so it's just everything is about the now. What article am I clicking on now? What video am I clicking on? What's the news headline? What's trending? What's buzzworthy? And we never remember, right? We, I don't remember what was the, the like viral thing yesterday, let alone last week or a year ago. Um, so we struggle to remember. The more we live in this perceptual presentism, um, meaning everything that comes into our perception is, is the now, um, the, the, the more our capacity for deep memory is eroded. Um, so the more we, and you see this right in our culture, like sometimes I scratch my head at the debates that are happening in our society, because I'm like, we had this debate 50 years ago, or like a hundred years ago, like the, Oh, there's so many resources in the past that we can draw from that we're just ignorant of because we're ignorant of history. And I think wisdom requires us to have a bigger picture where we, we build on the foundations that have come before us and we draw from the resources of the past. And we recognize that what's happening now is, is not the be all end all. We need to have a bigger view. We need to think about the past and the future um, and not just the, the now and yet that's the, the, the dominant like paradigm of, of the, the smartphone age. It's designed to be a disposable experience because it's more money for the social media companies, for YouTube to get us kind of addicted to this ephemeral cycle, right? Where we're, once we're done watching one thing on Netflix before the credits even roll, there's a suggestion for what to watch next. They wanna keep you moving on. They don't want you to linger on things. They don't want you to like turn off a, sh a show and sit there and think about it. <laughs> Even though that would be what would, that would be good for your wisdom is if af after we watch something or read an article on the internet, if we actually turned everything off and just stared at a blank wall and pondered what we just read or watched but we don't do that, right? We move on to the next thing. We click on the next link. We keep scrolling through our feeds and that's killing us. That is, that is killing our wisdom. If I could point to one thing that is destroying wisdom, it's the fact that we are filling every spare moment in our lives with more content, more content, more content to the point that there's literally no space left in our lives to actually think about things and to ponder and to synthesize what we've encountered. Um, so I think I say in the book at one point, like staring at a blank wall is like the most productive thing you can do um, in the digital age, because it, it's actually giving your soul some space to make connections and to process in the same way that, you know, physical eating, right? If you're, if you're eating constantly all day, every day, you never give your body any time to digest and to kind of synthesize the nutrients, you're going to get sick. You're not going to be physically healthy. And the same is true of our spiritual health. If we're binging on content 24 seven and we never let our mind breathe and rest and process, it's, it's not going to be good. Even the most nutritious content, we might be, we might be reading, you know, really intelligent articles and watching documentaries and award-winning films. 
but it's still not going to be good for you if you never pause enough to to let it like um, percolate and kind of synthesize a little bit.